Okay. All right, let's make a formal introduction for our listeners. Uh, Thank you. Really, Marco, my name is Claudio, and I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., uh, from the student Fairfax City. We're very grateful that Marco Werva accepted our invitation to our show. Marco, welcome back. Thank you very much, Claudio. It's a pleasure to meet uh, you because you are a friend. We are friends now, so I'm uh, very absolutely. glad to, to be here and to talk about film music or yeah. music in general. Yeah and about the situation of the film industry also. Absolutely. Thank you very much again. I always learn a lot from you, man. Recently, you received a, a Lifetime Achievement Award. Yes. I think it's called the Switzerland Literary Prize. Exactly. Uh, you know, it was the first... To elaborate on that. No, no, it was the first time that I received an award outside Italy. I mean, in, uh, in another country. And it was very, very lovely situation because... Uh, you know, it's strange. I am 60 years old, but I'm not so old. But I already received more than one Lifetime achieve, achieve, Achievement Award. But this one yeah. is special because uh, it's not uh, an award related only to music, but also related to my book, the book I wrote a few years ago called Music for Thrillers, well, Thriller Movies, the yeah. only book I wrote, of course. So it's an award that uh, touches all my activities, all my life, let's say. And yeah. um, it was a very nice ceremony. I was with my press agent, Lisa Bernardini, in Switzerland. She was with me. And uh, the award celebration was lovely. They made a video introduction to introduce me. And uh, it was a nice experience. Yes. Good for you. How long? When? When? Was that book published? It's in Italian or, or is it it's in Italian? Or... Unfortunately, we need to find someone in America who wants to who wants to translate it because uh, um, I'm trying to see if I have a book here nearby. Maybe I have someone, but it's not so nearby. I need to. <laughs> yeah, take take your time and take your time to find it. Ah, uh, between uh, the CDs I have here, I'm not sure. Yeah, I had it. Okay, so this is my book. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's uh, yeah. called La Musica nel, nel cinema, cinema thrill, thrill. Yeah. which yeah. means music in thriller films, which yeah. is a book um, that talks only about composers who have dedicated most of their lives uh, to writing music of German movies, so thriller, science fiction, horror movies. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, I didn't talk about Nino Rota, yeah. because he never wrote the music of a thriller, or Fiorenzo Carpi, or uh, Miklos Roja. I mean, Miklos Roja wrote a few thrillers, but uh, not so many. And so I concentrated on the composer. Even Ennio Morricone wrote a lot of music for uh, German movies, uh, for thrillers, and horror movies, yeah. the first three movies by Dario Gent, etc., that's right. And the Goblin, of course, the Goblin Band uh, wrote uh, some of the film scores for Dario Argento and Fabio Frizzi and many other composers, you know, and John Carpenter, who is either a director and a composer at the same time, which right. is interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah good so I, Yeah, so I talked about them, and of course I talked about my experience with Dario Argento on the film called The Giallo, and I included in the book um, all the scores I wrote for Giallo, for the yeah. film Giallo, which is half of the book. Just to understand how much work there is when you write the, the music of a film. Yeah. If the, the music of one film, uh, there is so much, so many music themes that it's enough to cover half of the book. So the, when you you know people go to see a film, they don't realize how many work there is uh, when you write the music of a film. Yeah, why uh, why sometimes uh, I I see a, a, a film, any any film, right? And you compose the music, right? Yes. And uh, you wrote ten pieces, right, or fifteen, right? You it end depends. up buying the CD or the vinyl, you know, and only. Peleka subset of the the, the, the 
the original uh, composition that you wrote. Also, sometime, so you wrote, let's say, 12. I will buy the CD, and maybe there are eight or nine, whatever. Sometime there is, for a particular scene, another 20, 25 second composition that will help the scene go in a transition from this to that, and it's not there. What who who whose decision is to that's a good question. One will go into a CD or uh, a vinyl. Yeah, you know, Claudio, uh, that's a good question. I have many CDs of film scores before I had LPs, and uh, I also noticed that usually it's the music publisher who owns the music, the rights of the music, who that decides which versions to include in the CD or LP. Usually, and maybe they're right, when there is a version that is too short, maybe that make, doesn't make sense to include it in the CD. So they try to put the, the versions that um, are longer, or they put together, I did this sometimes in my film scores, in my CDs, they put together two short pieces to get a longer piece of music. So you will not find exactly the same music that is in the film, in the CDs. Uh -huh. But sometimes, for example, The Fury by John Williams, there are two CDs. There yeah. is a CD with the original film score um, recorded with, I think, was the Boston Orchestra or something like that. And then there is a new version re-recorded by John Williams with the London Symphony Orchestra that is a little different from the version that is in the film. That was uh, two different perf performances. But sometimes, yes, there are pieces that are in, are in the film and they are not included in the, in the compact. For example, you know British composer Mike Batt? He's I hear the name. Writer. Yeah, Mike Batt. He's a very good songwriter, composer, yeah. pianist, and conductor. Conductor. He wow. also con conducted classical music concerts. So wow. he's a, a, a unique musician in the world because I didn't, I don't know another songwriter who is also a pianist, composer, conductor, is a complete, you know, a complete musician. And he wrote only two or three film scores in his life because otherwise he's more a songwriter. But he wrote a beautiful music for a film called Caravans with uh, Anthony Quinn, which was a film. Uh, produced, I think, in 1978, if my memory uh, is still working. And there was a CD, of an LP first, and then a CD. And mm. in the LP, there are many tracks missing. I watched the film again. I called him. I had a conversation with Mike, but through Zoom, actually. And uh, I asked him if he had the still the, the the recordings of the film score because there are two or three symphonic compositions that were very good and i didn't understand why they didn't include it in the lp and in the cd he told me marco um i was i was disappointed with this film because it didn't have success at all and so after a few years i decided to erase all the master masters the master tapes i had and so now it's uh, not possible anymore to find again those pieces that were not included in the LP or the CD. So they are missing. Yeah. Wow. Missing. Yeah. So you, you, you mentioned music, right? So always when a director hire you, a producer hire you to write music, you don't end up with the music, right? They They belong to... A record label? Oh, yeah. oh, no. The music rights could belong to the film production sometimes. <laughs> like yeah. you Americans usually ask you to have the, the ownership of the music. In that case, yeah. it should pay you more. Or in Italy, in, and sometimes in other countries in, in Europe, there's a music publisher who puts some of the money of the music, and he becomes the, the owner of the music. Got when it, there right. is no music publisher and there is not an American producer, sometimes the composer could could can keep the ownership of the music. Oh, I got it. I got it. Sometimes, because then if if you keep the publisher right, right, and if there is a new release, a new release, 
or that particular 20-second piece is playing a commercial on a TV or another movie, you get royalty. But if you give up the... No, the, you, the, you, you get right, anyway right? the royalties, but you share uh, the royalties 50% for the composer, 50% uh, to the music publisher. That's the only difference. Uh, right. So, um, yeah. So uh, the the... the the situation right now it's 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 that it's very difficult to still find music publisher who want to invest in the film industry in films film scoring because yeah. most of the film are not successful at the box office so they don't get back the money invested so yeah. it should be the producer who finance the the film score but still there are producer who said oh i don't have so much money for the music could you find a music publisher I said, okay, I will try. I usually find a music publisher because I'm someone who fights and uh, convince music publishers that that film is interesting, that maybe it's good to invest in a film score. But it's always more difficult to find to convince the music publisher, and they always usually uh, invest small budgets on the film score, with the exception, for example, of Kevin Ferry of Soul Trade Music Publishing, Chrysler Music Publishing, who accepted to go to record in London for last year for one of my latest film scores for The Island of Forgiveness, with the yep. song performed by Ellen Williams. He accepted yep. to spend more money to record in yep. London, but that, was, that yep. was an exception. Yeah, an exception. but it, in general, it's not the case, right? So they no, no, no. Yeah, they, no. they may ask you to lower your fees. Exactly, absolutely. Then, Sometimes, you know, I talk, for example, to an Italian music publisher yeah. recently, and to see if he was interested to finance the recording of a film score, and I said the director would like to have a small orchestra. He told me, "But we don't use any more orchestras. You can record only everything with digital." samplings so i know i can record with digital sampling but sometimes we need to use real orchestras <laughs> but that costs money right <laughs> I, that's the problem it's not that we don't use any more orchestra it's that we don't want to spend money on orchestra that's the should have been the answer from him <laughs> yeah wow wow well what happened also when we rejected a score yeah, you know, no, director but, but, hire you to do something in the pre-processing. Well, director saying, yeah, no, "I don't like the style but, of my movie." That uh, happen Cloud, that happens only when with big budget films, where they right. hire the composer like Jerry Goldsmith, got Jerry Goldsmith, for example. Yeah, for uh, more than one film, unfortunately, he had a, he had a rejected score. For example, Legend by Ridley Scott. Wow, he wrote all the music, then. Um, the director and the producers made a screen. A sh they showed the film to a small audience to have to know the reaction. And when yeah. they asked it, what do you think about the music? They probably said that the music is too old fashioned, too melodic, too classical. Uh, so they said, okay, that's it. Mr. Goldsmith, we, had, we, we decided to reject your score. Thank you very much for your, for your work. The composer has been paid. He can't say he can't say anything, but the music will not be used in the film. And so, in that case, they called the Tangerine Dream a German yeah. band, yeah. thinking that the electronic music would help the film to be more commercial. Yeah, but the film was not successful anyway. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So yes, see that's the situation. But only big production could afford to pay a composer to pay the orchestra. And if they realize that they don't like the music, they can reject the score and call another composer and spend again for the composer and the orchestra. Right. Man, I'm learning a lot, man. Yeah. So go, going back to the book, we always do tangent, tangent from a tangent, tangent. Um, yeah. So the book, so it is there a possibility that could be translated from Italian to, I don't know, English or Spanish or other? It's... It's, or, or it's difficult? No, it's not difficult. It's someone someone needs to pay the translation and uh, said he, yeah. he's interested to publish it in... Uh, you know, it's strange. Also in America and in other countries, there are almost no books about music for thrillers. 
I mean, there is a book by Randall Larson. I don't know if you know him. But he's not a composer. He is a film critic. And he wrote a music a book about music for thrillers. But from his point of view of a journalist, of a reporter, not of a musician. Mm. Otherwise, there are no other books uh, written by a composer, especially, that talks about this uh, kind of music. Mm. So it could and be it, interesting yeah. to translate it, but I don't know who could could do it. Put the money. And then uh, how all ago was that written? You got to do like a, a volume uh, two or volume three? Or? No, no, I don't think I will no. write volume two. So this book was written uh, in uh, 2019. So it was... Uh, recently, uh, right, yeah. Uh, a few years ago, yeah, a few years ago. 2019. And um, I don't know if you find a music publisher in America who'd be interested, would we'll be glad to send him uh, the book and um, and see if he could be interested to translate it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Fortunately, like you say, people people nowadays they want everything digital. Fewer and fewer people are buying CDs, buying all. You know, the budget for music, scores, film composer is getting lower and lower. And it, it, it's not like it used to be. So for someone to put money. Uh, yeah. And not and many people buy books. Selling or only a hundred books or whatever in English. Maybe it doesn't make sense. It's, yeah. the, you know, the, the, the market has been shifted for many years. I know, years. I know. I know. And, um, but maybe instead you can organize a concert in America, a film music concert. We'll be glad to come. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be good. I have a repertoire, only piano, of well-known European and American sc film scores, like uh, Romeo and Juliet by Rota, for yeah. fifth of dollars by Ennio Morricone, Days of Heaven by Morricone, uh, The Piano by Michael Nyman, um, Titanic by James Horner, the song, etc., and um, Love Story by Francis Lay, Giallo by Marco Werb. I have uh, this repertoire with the images, only yeah. piano and images. If, if it's possible, we can have also a singer with a few songs, but I can do it only piano and me that introduce the, the music, uh, uh, talk about the film, the composer. Uh, so if you have any idea who could be interested, I will be glad to come to America. Yeah, I have I have actually an idea. <laughs> I will send you a, a separate email with okay. with names or things that we can because here during the summer between May and June, yeah. Yeah. there are many, many let me turn my phone. There are many festivals. Exactly. Uh, that uh yeah, I have a couple in mind that I will I will I will keep you possible that because there's a possibility of doing that. Okay. Um also you um you end up receiving another word for I think I pr pronounced it correctly, Goffredo. Yes. So that's that, an Ita Italian historical movie about yeah. an Italian hero who died very young. He was 21 years old when he died. Wow. He was uh, fighting against, you know, the the Spanish and French conquerors in in uh, Genoa in, in in Italy, and. Yeah. Uh, he just wrote the lyrics, you know, the like a poem, a, 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 a text uh, about the, the heroes, the Italian who fights against the strangers. And a composer wrote a, a song using those lyrics. And this now is the national Italian national anthem in Italy. It wow. was read, the lyrics were, were, were written by this young Italian revolutionary called Goffredo Mameli, yeah, who wow, just amazing. died a few weeks after he wrote the lyrics of the song. So uh, no one before ever have done a film about him. And Italian director Angelo Antonucci was the first one to make a film about Goffredo Mameli. Now the Rai uh, television broadcast decided to make a TV series also, who is almost finished. And so there will be two, <laughs> one film and the TV series about this Italian hero. But the first one was the film, uh, was made last year. 
for which I wrote the, 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 the music. And I convinced the music publisher Franco Bixio, with whom I worked on other two films, one called Segui Me by Claudio Sestieri, one it's a comedy called Made in China Napolitano, to, to publish a real CD, not a digital CD, a real compact disc of the film score. And uh, I, I insisted, I said to Franco Bixio, we need to make a CD, we need to make a CD. After three months, I was saying to him, we need to make a CD, we need to make a CD, he did the CD. <laughs> he said, well, I, Marco, you, are, you, are, you have a very strong character. <laughs> Congratulations for your perseverance, <laughs> because usually I don't make any more CDs of film scores. It's finished yeah. for me, the CDs. It's closed, finish it. I don't publish any more CDs or maybe Deep Red, Profondo Rosso by Goblin, if there are fans that ask. Otherwise, I don't publish any more CDs. This is Ooh. the only CD of a recent score published by Cinefox, Cinefox Records in years. Maybe 10 yeah. years, I don't know. <laughs> the only yeah, one. That record, that record label is very well known. In oh, the of course. They got a lot of. A of lot course, of stuff. they recorded got many them. film scores by Oscar for Ennio Morricone, Armando Trovaioli, Piero Piccino, Rizzo Ortolani, Stephen Cipriani. But also, they recorded, for example, the music of uh, Keith Emerson for Inferno, for Dario Gentos Inferno. Correct. Yeah. A very good score by Keith, Keith Emerson. Keith Emerson, yeah, Emerson. yeah. Yeah, and you know, of course, Keith Emerson. That was not an electronic film score except one piece of music. It was a symphonic score oh. or orchestra recorded at the Trafalgar Recording st Studio in Rome. Owner, the owner is Franco Bixio. Yeah. The wow. manager of the Bixio Cinebox Records. So uh, fortunately, he accepted to finance the recording with a real orchestra of the music, Franco Bixio and to publish the compact disc. In just a few days ago, the, the compact disc came out. It's very recent. Yeah. And if it's selling okay, it, it, oh, I, I don't mean, know. there's going to be a limited edition, probably. Um, yeah, I think it's a limited edition. I bought some copies to help him. So I have yeah. uh, here at home a few copies of the CDs that I already sent to Many people around the world in Spain, uh, to Randall Larson, who writes the reviews of CDs in the, um, don't remember, the movie tracks uh, score magazine. I sent to a Spanish uh, journalist who writes uh, reviews of CDs in Spain, etc. So probably there will be a few uh, reviews of the CD. Uh, probably if the CD was would have not been published, it was only a digital CD, I don't know if there would be a review. So it's important, I still think it's important to keep in your hands a compact disc or an LP to watch the photos of the film and to listen to the music, you know. Yeah, yeah. Out of all the film score you have, you have done, how many, with percentage you will have the physical CD or the physical uh, or vinyl? Like oh, 10%, a, 15%? Or? That's a very good, good, very good question, Claudio. No, no one ever asked me this. Uh, well, you know, no, no, more. I think most of the film scores I have done have been published, pub published on CD. Just a few low-budget films, uh, but not so many, eh? have not been published, but most of my film scores have been published on CD. Maybe I'm, for you. Lack, I'm lucky. I, I never had an LP. An LP, no. Because yeah. when I started in 1988 to write music for films, I think already the LP industry was... Uh, mm, was... Uh, slowly uh, mm, giving space... Decreasing, to, right? So, to the yeah, CD yeah. industry, I think. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. see what's coming. Yeah. Um, for me, I like to have physical thing. I, I, you know, like I don't buy a PDF. I try to get the book, and I have, as you know, I show you about. I have a big piece of collection because I, I like to see the picture. I like to read the text. Exactly, exactly. Whether it's in English or no, or different language. It, and and also uh, in the CD, you, know, you have more information on the digital digital CD. You have only the track list. 
And yeah, that's right. The name of the composer and nothing else. And the photo of... The, you yeah. don't have a, a review or a presentation of the director of the movie, for example, who talks about the music of the collaboration with the composer. You don't have the photos of the film. Correct. You don't have the photos of the recording sessions. Mm. Uh, you don't have... Uh, you have almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, of course, I completely agree. You just mentioned that uh, you're working in a couple of new films. You, usually you work many at the same time. You don't get kind of confused or it's complicated. Or no, something. that's a good question. No, I tend to not use uh, to write on two films at the, main t on the same time. It happened sometimes uh, last year or this year. I don't remember exactly. When I, have, when I had two films more or less at the same time, Maybe one film was at, by the, at the end. I was almost completing that film score, and I started a new one because the director didn't want to wait too too long to have the score. But it was only um, only some in a few situations. Of course, it's more complicated to to deal yeah. with uh, with that. But I decided for next year. I hope to to succeed to not write anymore for super low budget films films. Because it's not it's not worth uh, doing that. For example, lately I, I one year ago I started to write on the music of a low budget film by a British production, and it didn't have the money for the special effects. The post production took one year. I lost a lot of time with my assistant, and at the end, uh, I, the director sent me the final cut of the movie. We synchronized the music to the film. After five mouses, five mouses, he decided to re-edit the film, and he pretended to that I resynchronized all the music again after five months. I said for no. free, for free, exactly. I said, listen, if you want all those uh, the changes, you need to pay something more. No, yeah. we don't have, we don't have, no. He even was offended. I asked money to him. You know, crazy. <laughs> yeah, there are people that that are pretentious. Who are pretentious are and crazy. They live in their world when everyone needs to be at, at disposal. They need to be slaves, you know, because they are the big directors. Even they are, if they are not well known, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I don't want to work anymore with people like that. No, of course, really, no. you don't make any money, and they they want you to. And, do they, and they are pretentious, you know. And uh, um, a few weeks ago, I went to London, and they met the manager of the London Symphony Orchestra. Now it's you know forty years I dreamed to record with this wonderful orchestra. Last year I recorded with the English Session Orchestra, is it that is a good orchestra? But of course, the London Symphony Orchestra is the maximum you can expect, and is the orchestra with whom John Williams recorded for many film scores, French composer yeah. Philip Sard, and the other composers. And I met the manager, a very nice person, and now I will do everything I can, I will fight to find a film that has a bigger budget to record at least one session with a string section of the London Symphony. Hopefully next year. That's my goal, you know, for next year. Man, I hope it works. I will hope you, too, because, yeah. For somebody who doesn't know, right, let's say you would know, because, you know, you do it for a living, but I, I like music, but I wouldn't know. If you if you put me if you give me three CDs and you don't tell me what it is, one London Philharmonic Orchestra, the one from Boston, the one from New York, and one from Australia. I and the same piece, six people, you know. Would I I don't would I of course you would know the difference. You would say no no no, this is more polished. But because I'm the musician and I have right. a ear I, very... I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to tell. Probably not. Uh, I, unless the orchestra is very bad, it's from Eastern Europe, I don't know, and yeah. they didn't play correctly, and maybe you could notice some difference. You know, I worked many times in the Eastern Europe, because, of course, the orchestras are cheaper, not because the musicians are less expensive, but because paying in euros... In, or even in dollars. In dollars is less convenient, but okay. And with their local money, with the change, it's like when you pay them $50, let's say, 
It, for them, it's not fifty dollars, one hundred fifty dollars. Correct. Yeah. Because in in relation to their exchange, local money, exchange rate for them, yeah. So for for us, it's convenient to go there. So even American productions go to record in Eastern Europe. Before they went to, to Italy because when the there the, the was a dollar and the lira in Italy, the dollar was higher than lira. So for the American, it was convenient to come here. Now that the euro is higher than dollar. Is not any more convenient, so they go to record in Eastern Europe, and yeah. the orchestras in Eastern Europe, in my opinion, are not exception. Not exception. I recorded in Bulgaria, and recorded in uh, in Budapest, uh, which which it's okay, but okay. I recorded in in Skopje in Macedonia, and I recorded in remote session with a small section of the. Prague Orchestra. I was never very happy. Never. Well, maybe for Giallo, with the Bulgarian orchestra, because the orchestra was not too small, it was okay. It was okay, the recording. But I mean, you in a, general, you prefer not to, right? So, If the, small, the, the orchestra is very small, it will be almost a disaster, you know, the problems of intonation and everything. So if you want a very intimate sound, with a very expressive sound of a good intonation, one of the few places uh, where you can go to record a uh, record is in London or Germany yeah. with the Berliner Philharmoniker or in Italy, but only with Academia Nazionale Santa Cecilia. There are not so many places where you can find that level of quality if you have a small ensemble. And then it will cost more. You need, it would be a different type of film, a different type of budget. So it it's more, but I don't know. Did you listen to the music of the Island of Forgiveness? Recorded yeah, it's a masterpiece, of course. And I interview Ellen a couple, of, I don't know, three oh, yes. months ago. Yeah, she's but a very know, nice lady. Too. Yeah. yeah, no, no, oh, the, 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 her voice is wonderful. But the orchestra, which sounds very, mm, I would say, warm and rich, there were only yeah. 15 musicians. Yeah. One five, 15, very small five. orchestra, very yeah. small. But they sound like they were at 25 or 27. This is because each each one of them has a sound of two musicians from the Eastern Europe, you know? Wow. <laughs> That's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference. So yes, they're more expensive, but there is a big difference of quality. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was that recorded at the Abbey Road Studios or no? Unfortunately, no. We, re we recorded at Angel Studio, which is okay, Angel it's a studio. good studio. But Abbey Road and Air Studios, which of course are better, uh, were a little more expensive than uh, Angel Studio. And at that time, it was almost a miracle, miracle that we have the budget to record in London. So it was impossible to record at the Abbey Road. But if I record in London next year or whenever it will be with members of the London Symphony, then yes, we will need to record at Studio One at Abbey Road or a Air Studio, which is a very good studio also in, uh, inside the next church, or at um, a rehearsal hall, which is also a recording studio where the London Symphony usually goes to rehearsal before making a classical music concert, which is La uh, Lance, Lance House, I don't remember uh, exactly the name right now, and the manager of the London Symphony suggested to record, for example, there, because it's less expensive than uh, Abbey Road or Air Studio. Yeah. But it's not a recording studio. It's uh, like a theater, like a big, big uh, stage, and you need to bring there the sound engineer with all the microphones, which to me it's always uh, more complicated. I prefer to go in a studio where there are already, where there is already all the setting of the microphones and and the recording studio and the mixer is there. I prefer, you know, it makes more. Um, it gives more confidence. Conf I'm more confident that the quality of the sound will be better. Would be good. Yeah. Yes. You know, recently a movie Napoleon. Oh, the budget oh, was like no, the budget. Wonderful. I saw the movie twice. The budget is like a hundred eighty million. I have no the whole budget. I don't well. Yeah, yeah, Apple, yeah. It's a big and film. Apple end up financing that, right? So they have a big film, big film. They have, and the 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 movie is very good. The music very good, but of course, 
I'm quite sure they spend, you know, a good several million dollars or whatever in, um, in the, you know, in the, in the, in the film for the, whoever wrote the, the music for the film. And of course, 180 million dollars, a lot of money for a movie. A lot uh, of money. You, do you remember which, with, in which, uh, with which orchestra they recorded? Because I don't remember now. Uh, I need to. I, was I it need London to check it out. or in, uh, in Eastern Europe? I know. I know the. I, I know the. The composer is an. Is an English man. I think they recorded in London, which is yeah, the best really, place to record. Especially when like, you yeah. have that budget, it's it's crazy. It's a madness to go to the Eastern Europe to record it's if you no, have the budget. There's no need, uh, right? That, it doesn't and make I, sense. I went to imdb.com and I saw. Uh, the music department associated with the film, there were like 20 people. I mean, no, just the, the main composer was this person, but that was assistant, 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 assistant. Well, you know what happened with the last, latest Mission Impossible? I don't yeah. remember exactly the title. I saw the, the film, which is set in different countries. It's set in Italy, I think in Brazil, in Venice, uh, in Rome, in Venice, in Brazil, and uh, maybe in Germany, they decided to do something very particular to record at the same time in all these different cities where the film has been sh shooted, has been filmed. And so um, Franco Patrignani, the owner of the recording studio in Rome, the Forum Music Village, where Ennio Morricone recorded all his film scores, and wow. many years ago Jerry Goldsmith was coming to Rome to record, Bill Conti was coming to Rome, Georges Delery was coming to Rome, they always recorded at the Forum Music Village. He organizes the recording in remote session uh, for, um, with the orchestra in Rome, with a choir in Venice, and uh, maybe somewhere else, and they record at the same time the music in different areas. It was very particular, this experience. Very strange. Yeah. <laughs> wow, very, very, very unusual. And they had a big, big uh, as you said, many people working, uh, you know, making the plan. At uh, this time, we record in Venice with this number of choirs. At uh, uh, one year, one um, at um, the same time, we will record with the orchestra in Rome and also record, and I think in London they recorded also. And we record yeah. uh, with a smaller section in Rome. And we have this sound, we have, they had all, everything written perfectly, you know, like a plan, well organized. And many people was working in their organization of this because it's not easy to organize at the same time all this recording in different places. Yeah, of course, it's crazy. Yes. <laughs> Another good movie is coming a couple of days here, for, it called, of course, Italian, Ferrari. Ah, Ferrari, it, I didn't see the, yeah, the film. Is it good? Uh, no, no, no. I will see it on Saturday morning. Saturday yeah, morning. the director is very good. I'm not sure if the film is so exceptional, but the directors are very good. Okay. Yeah. And the, the music, I know, is very good. Yeah? Who, who wrote uh, the music? Uh, it's going to be... So, there is one person, I need to look at the name, but... I don't remember, yeah. So, uh, Marcelo, Marcello de Francisci and Lisa Gerard. Ah, Lisa Perfect. Gerard, the, the, the one who worked with Hans Zimmer on The Gladiator, yeah. Exactly, and yeah. the Marcello. I don't know if you know them or not, but yeah. So the movie open up and the movie for Christmas. So I will, I will, I will see it like the night before, the day before, in the morning. I you think. Know, it's, yeah. yeah, you know, on the Gladiator, yeah, it was the 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 editor of the film was actually who is Italian actually, who listened to some music by Lisa Gerard, and yeah. he proposed her name to Ridley Scott. Because the, the musician was uh, Hans Zimmer, the yeah. it was not Lisa Gerard. Of he course, said, why, yeah. Why don't you try uh, to to why you don't you ask to Lisa Gerard to write one or two melodies for the film because her style could work when uh, uh, her her family dies and when he he's dying at the end and he goes back to paradise with his family. This uh, melody and her voice could work well, and so he. He, uh, the director involved with Lisa Gerard for this reason, because uh, the editor uh, convinced him. Otherwise, yeah. the music would have been only by Hans Zimmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, she, she's unbelievable. She's, she's very good. Yeah. She's, 
Very good. There are some people that Hans, Hans Zimmer is he's always working like three or four films at the same time. I I, I have read, but of course underneath he has exactly many, he has many collaborators. Many, many, many collaborators. Many. Maybe he you know it's not that he's it's like a writer, right? Like a writer. He's uh, not he's alone. Three books and there, <laughs> those writer, right? Somebody exactly. else write chapter two. Exactly. You write chapter three. The guy, that guy, chapter four. And well, then he put the name on it. Yeah. You know? so, exactly. Sometimes it's written additional music by. Additional music by. Yeah. Sometimes it's not written, so we don't know exactly. <laughs> for example, uh, beautiful music he wrote for the Da Vinci Code. Yeah. There is a beautiful piece of music. Uh, who is the music theme of this? Uh, um, in the film, she is uh, like a, a, a goddess. I know how to call it, no a divinity. Who was the fiance yeah. of uh, Jesus? No, in the story, of course. Yeah. And he he wrote her music theme, which is a lovely music theme. And I know that uh, um, a British composer who I met in London many years ago. Who was also working with uh, with um, um, oh, I need to remember his name. Sometimes I remember I forget name of people. You know, it's a problem. One one minute one minute I will tell you. Uh, yeah, look it up if you want. Just one minute. So um, the Deer Hunter. Ah, of course. That's a that's one of my favorite movies of all time so the composer of the deer hunter is stanley myers you remember him yeah 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 he yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I know. was yeah, a I know. good composer and he was he had a company with hans zimmer's and zimmer many years ago and he helped hans zimmer writing his first music theme in a, in a film maybe you don't know that it was an erotic film called the Do number no. two and he asked to Hans Zimmer to write an electronic piece of music. So it's thanks to Hans Stanley Myers that today no one remember that's yeah. that Hans Zimmer started to write music for films. Now Hans Zimmer is a divinity and no one remembers Stanley Myers. That's, that's a, right. It's crazy, no? If, if you if you think so. And uh, Stanley Myers, who was also a good friend of a, a younger composer, uh, Sir, no, Sir, oh, I can't remember his name. One minute, Stanley Myers, Lady, uh, Lady Chatterley, Chatterley Lover. Okay, so okay, Richard Harvey, who actually is a good British composer, but he's not so well known, unfortunately. And uh, he didn't write so many film scores, but he's still in touch with uh, Hans Zimmer. And Hans Zimmer involved him, involved him in the Da Vinci Code, oh, officially as a conductor of the choir or arranger conductor of the choir. But I'm I don't know. I am asking to myself: Is that music theme that I love, the the music theme I was talking about, if it's not also written partially written by Richard Harvey, because it has more an intimate sound that is more closer is that is closer to richard harvey than not the big sound of of hans zimmer but of course i don't know that's something we need to ask to hans zimmer <laughs> yeah and he, hopefully one day i will interview him and I, yeah the, i i was looking at uh, i got a trick i the music uh for the movie ferrari is is written by uh, daniel pemberton Oh yeah, I know. I already heard. He wrote music for animation movies, I think. Right, and then of course, uh, additional music uh, is done by Lisa Girard, and then okay, fellow the Franchichi. So um, okay, she probably yeah, wrote usually something. in some cases they're right. Here's when main composer, but additional, you know, three minutes here, two minutes there is yeah. Know, well, but, I, I I I often use uh, additional music composers. Addition. To yeah. give to young people the opportunity to write some music in a film because maybe they didn't have the opportunity, the opportunity. Or, yeah. and also to divide the work to not write all the music of the film, which is very tiring, you know, uh, very um, demanding. 
So uh, I usually, I often usually uh, use additional music composers in my film scores. Not for Giallo. For Giallo, I wrote all the music of the film. If so, yeah. From Zoo, my first film score, I wrote all the music. There were only two or three classical compositions. For Amore uh, Libertà Mazzaniero, maybe yeah, there was a small piece of. Uh, but lately, I um, involves. Often, I often involve other composers in my film scores. That's good. A difficult question. What have <laughs> been the greatest challenges of your career so far? Looking back, you know, crazy fight with a director, with a studio, in general terms, I don't mean to, you know, the people that didn't the want more, to pay. The more did. challenging moments. Yeah. Well, I had two or three bad moments with a few directors. Uh, sometimes it didn't work with them. Sometimes, you know, so, so this this job is crazy. Uh, it happens that you have a, you have a, it happens to have a discussion with a director. You think that that's it, the collaboration is over, and then you meet the director in a film festival, and you become a friend of the director, and he calls you for the next film project. It's crazy. It, this happened with uh, uh, Rida Behi, who is a very good uh, uh, Tunisian director. I worked yeah. with him by distance without meeting him. And he was changing all the time, uh, um, asking for changes all the time, all the time. So we had a certain point, I had a discussion you know, with him. And uh, the film was invited to the Cairo Film Festival. I met him. We became friends. Now he wants me from the next uh, film he will shoot maybe next year. Right. You never know what can happen, you know. You never know. It's difficult to understand. But yet I had some difficult moments in the past with a few directors. Yes. Uh, and, and in some cases, you never worked with the director in it. You never crossed paths. You never saw him or her. Uh, no. It does, usually it no. With someone with, with whom I had a discussion, uh, usually no. The collaboration finish; uh, it's over. Uh, but there are the exceptions, like this one. It can yeah. happen. It's a crazy world. You know? Really, really, it's a crazy, crazy world. You never know what will happen, and uh, but you need to be prepared to that. You know, I am a, I am a person who is always very um, um, happy to help. Yeah, the director, I am available, always available. But when the director becomes uh, mm, very demanding, oppressive, and mm, and uh, arrogant, then yeah. at that point I I have difficulties. You know, I have difficulties in dealing with that. Yeah, I don't like arrogant people, and so it's uh, it's a problem. I, at that point, I lose the interest in working with that person. Yeah, That's of course. If, you know, you're, yeah, it's that a problem. Is, it's a problem. There are, there are always. Uh, crazy people and complicated people in the world, man. You know, in all oh, that, area, that's for sure in, in every profession. You know, so absolutely. Um, I don't know if you know, but uh, I am preparing a master class dedicated to scoring action movies. Uh, last year, I I hold a master class for historical period dramas. Yeah. Next year. Uh, was had has never been done even outside Italy, I think, this masterclass. Only really? for scoring, if you know something, let me know because I never heard. It's it's only for to for to write, it's for to compose music for action movies. And I'm sure that many also young people will be interested in this masterclass. Uh, even from I don't know, from foreign foreign countries, hopefully from America, maybe it's too far away, it will be too expensive for them to come. But from England, from Spain, for example, last year I had a Spanish young composer, a young young girl who came from Spain to follow my masterclass. This is the proof that also the masterclass for pure dramas was not done in other countries. I had wow. this idea that other yeah. people didn't have. So um, I hope that this masterclass will be successful for action movies. And I also will try to make at the same time, I need to understand if it's possible, 
to make a comp competition, film, film scoring competition for action movies to connect with the massive class. But I need to understand how to connect because they, the risk is that they disturb each other, the competition and the masterclass, because maybe some people could be more interested in the competition, some people more interested in coming to the masterclass, you know? So I need right. to understand. Maybe do the, the competition after the masterclass. That way the people that attend that, the class, they really want to learn and they are not going to be competing with one another because they all want to learn for yourself. And then a couple of months after, do like a, you know, competition in Europe for people that have attended your master class, people that have not attended. That way, there wouldn't be a conflict in the class. That could be an idea. But my idea was to do the, the competition before the master class. This way, the winners of the competition could have been awarded the same evening uh, that we have cool. the, the final concert of the master class. I don't know. I need to think exactly. How many How people do you think they would be attending or they have attended? Oh, the, the master class, not class. so many people. Uh, like last five, year I ten. had, yes, last, last year I had only five people. The year yeah. before it was a master class for thrillers, films. I had seven maybe. But I'm sure that for action movie, movies, they will be more interested, especially for younger, younger composers. Yeah. And then uh, you say someone from Spain, the other are and Italian? The one, Italian? Uh, last year, yes, they were all, all Italian except the one from Spain. And the one and then, from, right, yeah, go sorry. Ahead. Sorry. The, the one from Spain was very happy with the masterclass, so I'm sure she, Anna Moris, her name, she will... Uh, she will uh, come for the next month, the master class. She will be uh, present. And then how many is it? The course, it's, it's like a week long, three days, uh, five, days? Five, five days, five days, which so is a long months. time because in five days you can do a lot of things. But, oh, yeah. but the composers need to write the music before they arrive to Italy. Otherwise, they, they will lose some t a lot of time writing. So they need to write the compositions before. Then when they come, we talk about the composers who write uh, music for action, who wrote action music for action movies, uh, using the orchestra, using only electronic music, or using both orchestra and electronic music. And then we listen to the compositions by the students, we analyze them, and we mm, discuss if they work with the scenes to, for which they were they are they were written, and at the end, um, they we we there is a, an audience uh, in a theater, and we listen again to those compositions with that those images. This way, the audience can see what they have done, and then there is a piano, and they play at the piano, well-known music themes, in this case from action movies, for example, Rambo by Jerry Goldsmith. Yeah. Uh, or, wow! Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's the 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 way we did it last year, and probably the same, probably most of, more or less the same way we will do it next year. Uh, and, and it's in Rome. It's going to be in Rome. No, or? no. It's a place, a lovely place, where they shoot. You know the film, the Narnia Chronicles. Chronicles of Narnia was the title, the adventure film. No, how long ago? No, I'm not sure. It's a well-known films, the Chronicles of. I need, I need to check it out. No, yeah. I, I don't think yeah, I can. Chronic Chronicles, the Chronicles of Narnia. It's a film of two thousand five. Yeah, with yeah, well, not well-known actors. Uh, yeah, Tilda Tilda Swinton, for example, James McAvoy, the director. It was uh, um. The director was Andrew Adams. Well, anyway, the yeah. film was filmed in Narni, the city okay. where the it's a, a very ancient medieval city, lovely city, where uh, there is a classical music film festival organized by Italian pianist Cristiana Pegoraro, where inside which uh, where I, t I have this masterclass. Good for you, man! Wow! Yeah, yeah. I, I, I nice, went very nice place. 
You could and during the summer, uh -huh. I told you I went I went to Verona and I went to Milan to see Peter Gabriel. Verona is beautiful. So no, Verona, great. it's a, a beautiful it's city. It's another world, man. It's another world, man. It's uh, not so far away from uh, Narni, Verona. Yeah. It's um, similar. So why don't you come at the end of July to Narni to as a guest of the... Thank you. I would try. Yeah, I would love to. And, uh, and to I would like to. Yeah. And I would like to visit. Uh, thank you. Appreciate. It. I would like to visit Rome as well. Italy. Of course. Man, every every city in Italy. Every street. Never mind a city. Every street in Italy is is, is unbelievable. It's like for, it's going to Paris, but uh, like a corner. You know, getting a coffee or or food or going for another street. And I in Verona, I remember that I, on purpose I got lost. I went left, I went right, I went left, I went right, and discovered different street. And I, you know, Verona, you know, when I went to see the show for Peter Gabriel's, this very small area where I was walking around, and it, unbelievable, it's so beautiful, man. Your country is unbelievable, man. No, of course. It's a, um, a, a Romeo and Juliet kind of city. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> Romeo yeah. and Juliet. So it's yeah. an, a, a medieval city also, no? There, there are still medieval parts, yeah. I think, in Verona, yeah. no? Balcony. Yeah. yeah. And, but uh, Milan was a big a big city. Not, I, I like it's a, diff a different yeah, kind of city. Different. Milan is more a yeah. uh, modern city, but Venice is unique. Venice, it's a um, beautiful yeah. city. Of course, we went to Venice, and uh, it's unbelievable. You went to Venice to visit uh, Pino Donaggio? No, you made the interview with him. Yeah, so no, I interviewed Pino before, before, like a year no, ago. before. But I, I, uh, next, next time that I go there to Italy, go well, it's going to be next year for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm going to Italy for sure next year. And, uh, I, I need to make arrangement with him, uh, to go and visit him. He owns yeah. a studio. And there, as as you know, right? I'm not telling you. You need to take the Vaporetto and then take here. <laughs> I, I was in his house many many years ago. I think the studio was not yet built. Yeah. So no, we, he I has the studio in one. I forgot the. But, but that that's more recent. In a few a few years ago, maybe he opened. The yeah, he, he had the studio. Yeah. When I went to meet him, that was twenty years ago, and the studio yeah. was not yet ready. So I went to his house. Yeah, he's yeah. a very nice guy, man. Yeah, yeah, and he, you know, it's one of the, it's like Mike Bat. It's uh, a lucky man who had uh, three different music lives in the same life. I mean, he was a violinist, violinist player in the Solisti di Roma, classical music. That's then right. he was a successful songwriter in Sanremo. Then a successful Sanremo. film composer. Three different musical lives in the same life. <laughs> and... Uh I think he is like an 80 now, 80 years old, and he's still working. He's still composing yes. when I taught him. And the, you know, they call different people are calling him different directors. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's like Morricone. He worked at that and, and le until yeah. the, the almost last days of his life, Morricone. He didn't want to, yeah. to accept that uh, he should stop or take a break or retire, retire or something. Retire. He said, no, I'm, I want to work away. Also, I, wa I went to see one of his la la latest concerts. He, he still wa he's, wa was still conducting the orchestra, but he was very tired. So between a piece and another, he had a chair, and he was sitting on the chair. To rest, right? Yeah. To rest. And then but going back going back to conduct, etc. Because it's very tiring to conduct an orchestra when you are eight years old, especially, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure. I think um, Ennio Morricone. I think he has two kids. I think one one is Andrea. He has more than more than two kids. Two. Yeah, Andrea is the only one who is uh, still. He is a musician. He is a composer and conductor. Yeah, it's but 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 be, it must be difficult for him it was, it to make the... a name for himself because he's exactly well always. We, we, we compare well, with his dad, right? It's you know, it's difficult and it's uh, a chance. I mean, he, he, the father, his father helped him a lot. Yeah. Sometimes they were signing together the music of a film or a TV series, because the father said, "Okay, let's work also with my son." So he was lucky. But then, of course, 
when now that his father died, he is working a little more, but more conducting orchestra than not writing film scores. But usually when he goes to conduct the orchestra, he conducts his father's music, not so much his own music. So yes, he's still under the <laughs> the, the, the umbrella of the, the any umbrella Morricone. of his father, of course. Ennio Morricone, the guy will be remembered for years and years, like like Jerry Goldsmith and John Williams, all this. Well, here yeah. in Rome, in Italy, they only make concerts about Morricone, and they, I mean, I think it's a little exaggerated because you know it seems like there was there was no composer before Ennio Morricone. Nino Rota didn't exist. <laughs> Mariana Schumann exists, Fiorenzo. I mean, okay, Morricone was more successful than them, but the, Nino Rota also was an important composer who wrote many film scores for big films. And uh, what I don't like is that during the, those concerts, tribute to Ennio Morricone, they always play the same music. The same music they can not hear anymore. Again, the same music. There are so many interesting compositions by Morricone that even, in my opinion, better than those well-known themes, they are never performed. That's, that's the, foolish, they, right? They don't have the courage to propose something less well-known but beautiful. They don't have the courage. That's, uh, that's, very, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah, they should have maybe like three nights, right? The classical one, uh -huh. the, 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 you know, the less known, and then you know. No, no, in the same that. in the same concert, they can put the some of, of the well-known compositions, but then they need to oh, put, okay. for example, Orca. You know the film Orca, with Charlotte Rampling, and uh, Richard Harris, I think, was the well, the, the these uh, fisherman who kills this animal, the orca, a yeah. female who was. Um, had a baby orca almost uh, coming out, and he kills, of course, the female orca and also her her son. And so yeah. the male orca wants to have a revenge, and he followed the fisherman and until at the end he succeeded to kill him. Wow. And after <laughs> killing him, he commits his suicide. The orca. Yeah. To, to join the paradise, maybe, of the animals, her female orca and her son. It's a very strong, dark uh, tragedy, right. horror movie yeah. tragedy, and the music by Ennio Morricone is very good. There is a lovely, sad music theme that is never performed in concert. And also, for example, Prato by the Fratelli, the Taviani Brothers, it's a lovely music theme for recorded and strings, never performed. And... Uh, uh, and other compositions, so uh, they don't have the courage, to, you know, to present beautiful music themes because the films were maybe were less successful, you know. Yeah, but they need to take the great music from maybe another great movie. I recently bought a. Hold on, I think I have it here a box from Morricone. Uh, um, it's it's uh it's made it. It's called. Segreto. I don't know if you know. I heard about what what the, what it's what are the titles inside? Yeah, let, let me let me open it inside because yeah. I listened to last week. It's very very good, very very good. Uh, That's good. Let me see. It has well. It it, it covered different period of his life, right? So okay. The first one is, I, I'm not, of course, I'm not going to pronounce it other well, but uh, Cuando le amore e sensualita, mm -hmm. es, es, star system, mm -hmm. historia di vita, mm -hmm. uh, incontro, il bandito oh, yeah. d'arte, un yeah, uomo, un uomo, like you mm -hmm. mentioned, right? No, 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 that's another thing. That's uh, that, those are films from of the 70s, more or less. Right, correct. Yeah, yeah. 71, 73. Louis Perlet, uh, Las Magliatura, 75. Mm -hmm. And then, but it's stuff from the 80s as well, like yeah. uh, Le, Le Automobile, 
uh, uh -huh. Star System, el clan de de Siciliani. Siciliani. Well, that, that's a, a well-known composition by Morricone. It's a very good yeah. composition. Sometimes they perform it in, in, in a concert. Yeah, and then a, a beautiful picture with the guy. And... He was young. Uh, can you check if there is in the um, in the album also Il Prato? It I was maybe you... 80s or 90s. Il Prato. Uh, because that's uh, uh, one of the best music team he wrote, you know, Il Prato. That will be from the movie. Oh, no, Il Prato can... or Addio Fratello Crudele, maybe also. And hopefully, mm -hmm. Sacco Vanzetti. No, no, the two of them. No? Ah, that's that's it, not good. What happened? This this box is a little bit special because it was previously unreleased and first time on vinyl. Oh, okay. And, uh, it, but it, it is it is is a uh, is a masterpiece. It comes with mm -hmm. with also with a with a with a poster with. You know the each of the movies. Uh, so they took. That's they, nice. they, yeah, they took probably one or each one of the. Um, but it is. Um, and you see, and there are many thrillers because the Tarantula del Venter di Nero, and uh, um, this one in the center of seventy two is a thriller. And also, yeah. Cop Killer. Cop Killer is a thriller. Yeah, by, right. By Incontro, and, uh, no, Incontro, he... Incontro is a love story. Yeah. yeah. But if, if this box is about the piece, man, mm -hmm. we, we need to make one of your stuff. Ah. Well, well some. A record. Yeah, so, you know what? Someday, um, Claudia, I would love to make his LP like this one where you open. And you have all those more informations about my film scores. But now it's very expensive to make an LP, especially like this one you have in the hands that which you can open. It's yeah, very, it's very expensive. Yeah, they were made 1500 copies. Okay. Of course, it was done in Italy. Very beautiful. Put together. Yeah, ah, that's very nice. Very nice. Who, who did that uh, LP, LP set? Oh, it, Hold on, it's it um, be in the name of the publisher. No? Let me see. The publisher is, is um, it says Cam Sugar. No, Cam Sugar, of course, is the other. All the music is by Cam Sugar. Cam Sugar music, yeah. Creas oh, Fiori. okay, okay. It's from the repertoire of Cam. I see. Okay. Yeah, Cam 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 Sugar music that uh, is gone, of course. Yeah, Cam was, you know, the 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 most important, well known music publisher in Italy. Company. Yeah. Then, yeah. unfortunately, uh, more than twenty years ago, they closed it. Really? They were not. They were not getting enough money for the from the film scores. They closed the company, and uh, Caterina Caselli, the owner of Sugar, bought all the repertoire of Cam, a lot of a lot of music, and now it it became Cam Sugar. Yeah, but the original. Uh, Music publisher was Cam. Oh, we see. I see. That's the only artist that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I need to. They have, I, I need to learn Italian. My pronunciation. Nah. <laughs> no problem. Uh, but Il Prato, for example, was yeah. published by Cam. Why they didn't put that in that uh, LP set? I don't understand. Il Prato is one of the best mu music themes ever written by anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what the the word segreto means. Secret, secret, the secret. Yeah, maybe that's what they. That maybe should be. Purposely... That should mean that they are well, that they are less known. Less so known, right? So on purpose, more, maybe they did that way. Right? One more reason to put El Prato, which is not well well known. <laughs> Why they didn't put that? I don't understand this. Yeah, from what year is that movie? And uh, now I'll tell you. One minute, I'll check it. Uh, Star System. Yeah, those are. Those I think are... it's uh, from this the se late seventies. Now I'll tell you. All right, Prato, uh, seven, 1979. 1979. Yeah. Il Prato. Yeah. And they didn't put it. 
No, no. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Whoever make the selection, we need to complain about the the kind of sugar people <laughs> who did that. Recently, you you were in New York uh, from Sorry? the San Valentino Global Music Awards. No, no, I was not in New York, but I was a member of the jury of the... Oh, I see. The, um, of the... Um, this competition, because the the one who invented the competition is Cristiana Pegoraro. He's ah, a very okay. good Italian pianist, who is the one who organizes the Narnia Classical Music Festival, in which I teach my master class every... Um, every summer in july yep. at the end of july and she's the one who came in studio she was very kind to perform the piano solos of goffredo the historical movie italian movie about goffredo mameli and it was the first time she was recording a film score at the piano and she 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 did it perfectly perfectly so cristiana pegoraro asked me if i want to be a a member of the jury, I said, uh, of course, a Christian. Yes. <laughs> no problem. Good. And she usually performs at the Carnegie Hall in New York. He yeah. make, she makes a lot of concerts, or at least one one or twice a year at the Carnegie Hall. Wow. Piano solo or piano and uh, another instrument or piano and string quartet. So she, and sometimes maybe piano and orchestra. Less often, yeah. of course. She's a good I mean, pianist. You you need to be very talented to play at the Carnegie Hall, and it's she's talented. She she's a classical music player. Uh, she oh. makes she performs in other countries, but of course Carnegie Hall is a very prestigious hall, very, very famous place. Yeah. You recently also get another award, Premio Cinema Massimo Giaboni, twenty twenty three. Yes, that's another at lifetime. Of, yeah, yeah, that's another lifetime achievement award. Wow! Uh, by an Italian director, his name is Felice Corticchia, who is the owner, the, um, the creator of this uh, um, uh, uh, award for people of the film industry, uh, directors, actors, I don't know, editors, uh, director of photographies, composers, and this year he 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 decided to give me the, this award. So I thank, of course, I thank him, thank him for the, <laughs> the award. Yeah. Maybe one day my YouTube channel we need to give you an award, lifetime award for interviews in America. <laughs> in America, so we need to pay your ticket. <laughs> we do it by uh, phone. Oh, by the way, um, one of the next film scores I have, yeah. I actually already started writing a music theme. Yeah. It's um, a very dramatic film about a woman it's a real story unfortunately yeah. who had a cancer yeah and uh, she had many difficulties uh, to fight this cancer and also people around her was trying to you know to was were, were scared of being uh, together with her um and she almost lost her job i mean many and also her um uh, husband at the at the beginning was helping her at the end she he was suffering of this situation you know because it was not easy to to help her uh in this in this um Conditions, tragic right? tragic event at but at the end she fights she fights and she succeeds to 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 win against the cancer wow and the director of the movie is a, a producer who is he's also a director called Ziad Hamzeh, and he's the one who produced the Island of Forgiveness, the Tunisian movie. I got it. I got it. Yeah. That we recorded in London. Yeah. And since he was very happy with the music, he asked me to write the music of this new film that he will direct, not only I got produce. It. He will oh, direct. It. Yeah. It's taken from a book by this woman who actually is a real woman who had this this cancer and um, of course the director believes in this project and he thinks that it, this film could be 
we have a screening at the Cannes Film Festival, Venice Film Festival, maybe a, a Golden Globes, eh? or who knows, maybe an, an Academy Award nomination. I mean, he's trying to, he will do the, his best to make a good film. And they will shoot in Boston. Yeah. And uh, he will invite me in January to go there during the shooting. So wow. I will go to Boston. Uh, you know, I, I studied in New York, which is close to Boston, 40 years ago music. And in wow. 40 years, I never went back in that area. I went back to Los Angeles, but not... In a the city Boston's. nearby, nearby no, no. New York, like Boston. Oh. So um, that, that's it. I will go back to America and uh, yeah. in, in Boston. Boston. Yeah, make, make sure make sure you bring like a winter jacket because it's oh yeah, be it will snow, be very cold. Snow on the ground. And if, I remember yeah. New York was so cold during the winter. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was so cold. Sometimes, you know, there was a wind coming to my face yeah. and it was uh, everything like, you know, like yeah. an iceberg. Um, my yeah. face was come, becoming an iceberg. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, absolutely. Very cold during the winter. between Almost December. like Russia. Almost like Russia. Yeah. De December and March, you know, cities like Chicago, New York, yeah. Boston oh. are very tough. How do you, how do you work in general? You... You wake up, you go to a particular room, you go outside for a studio. How do you start when somebody hires you? What what's the process? You well, when I am involved before the shooting, which is more yeah. almost almost very rare now nowadays, happens yeah. almost never. In this case, for example, I am involved before the shooting in this film. But normally yeah. they, they involve the composer when they're, they're, the film is already in post production and almost finished. Right. But when the film uh, is not, it doesn't exist, not yet, because it didn't yet shoot, then I read the script and I try to write a few music themes related to the story and to the characters of the film. Then when I receive the first editing, I, I try to see if those music, music themes work or not uh, in the film. That's the, the, the process. The process? The process. And then, of course, also the director should accept those music themes. I mean, sometimes, you know, there is a music thing that I think works well with the film, but the director does it, doesn't like it. I can, I can, I can't do anything. And I need to throw that music theme and write another one. I mean, I'm not the one who, who commands. It's the director who, who decides about the music themes that we should get. We, I can only propose, make right. a proposition. But I'm quite sure the, Whatever you're writing, you save it for a future film. Exactly. The music, the exactly. music belongs to you. Of you're course. not going to be deleting that from your hard drive or not, of course. You, you mean uh, the music that is not used in the film? Right. Yeah. It no, belongs no, to course. you. Of yeah. course. Absolutely. It was not used. It belongs to me. Yes. yes. We need to we need to create a <laughs> final box like you, like the one from Morricone. Yeah, I, I would like to do that. But it's very expensive. Unless you find the maybe in the Eastern Europe in Eastern Europe a company who publishes LPs and it's less expensive. I don't know. I need to think about that. Because that could be for collectors more interested than not a CD. Yeah. yeah. Publish an LP. You know, yeah. for your legacy, for your kids, you and they, you know. You know, this what my dad did for yeah, me. Yeah, but Claudio, we don't know what will happen exactly in the next few years if the LP long playings the will yeah. still uh, exist. The collectors will still buy LPs, or mm -hmm. they will die with the CDs, and there will be other. We don't know exactly. Yeah, no, it's hard to. That's... I hope. I, I hope. Anyway. Yeah, I hope we continue. I mean, you know. Fewer and fewer people are buying CDs and vinyl. In, that's a general statement, right? In general, when a new band, you know, they decided to spend, you know, fifty thousand dollars a new record, or whatever, they recoin that investment in merchandising. They, you know, you go to a concert, you buy T-shirt, oh yeah, you buy poster sign, and some CD sign and some vinyl records. So, you know, they they. 
fewer and fewer people are, are buying in general, in general terms, right? They're buying music, so well, uh, here, it's hard here, to recover that investment. Of course. Here in Rome, there is a mu music day, it's called. Yeah. They do it every three months, more or less. It's, um, I would say, it's um, a kermess where you can find a lot of rare LPs, long playings. Yeah. Pretty, pretty three years. And there are collectors who would go there to find the rare Pink Floyd LP or, mm. uh, I don't know, LP by Elton John or a film score on LP. And they go there. But I don't know how many collectors are in the world that would still buy LPs. That's, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. And then the, the, the prices are, are, are a discount instead of paying whatever, 20 euros. No, they no, pay there, 10 it's not a this is not a discount. They pay. No, they, they 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 propose the the real uh, price of the LP. If you know the value of the LP is thirty dollar, the thirty euros, you need to pay thirty euros for that. that okay, rare. so it's no it's not a record. It's not a discount. It's discount. a market market for collectors, uh, and collectors it. are willing to spend money because they are looking for that specific specifically LP. And a lot of go there. Did you have you gone there? Yeah, uh, I went there. Yes. Uh, yeah. Usually there there are um, fifty persons, sixty persons going there, and sometimes they are meeting with composers or bands uh, during the this uh, you know how you say market event uh, LP, yeah. LP event. There are, for example, you know the the Angelis brothers, Widow and Maurizio De Angelis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Who, are, yeah. Uh, wrote many film scores uh, of the um, comedies uh, with Bud Spencer and Terry Seal. See, TV series like Sandokan or things like that. They, yeah. um, they, when they come, there are a lot of fans who come. They sit and they listen to them talking to both of them talking. They are all they get, they are getting old, of course, but they are still uh, um, doing some things. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. What what advice do you could you give? Will you give to young aspiring composer that kids are in the seventeen year old, eighteen year old that they are finishing high school? Yeah, they like movies. They like to go to the movie. They like listen to music, and they're thinking about following a career as a yeah. As a well, kid. you know, yeah, many people ask me this. There's not a solution, um, a form, a magic formula that you can get. You can just suggest uh, the different solutions that they, for example, what I did uh, when I was um, 25 years old, I recorded a composition called Adagio for the Victims of Auschwitz. No, sorry, no, Adagio for the victim Victims of the Nuclear War, something like that. I sent this recording that I recorded with students of the Italian Conservatory of Rome to three directors that were pre preparing a film at that time. Only one of the three replied and said, yeah, I like your music. Could we meet? That person was Cristina Comincini, who was preparing her first film as a director. And it was not a small film. It was film a uh, film with a budget of one, more or less 1 million euro it was not a small film but the chance the 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 ch the the chance i had is that they she didn't think to to ask me to write all the music of the film of the film she th was thinking to of having only one or two original music things by me and the rest classical music that oh, gave me the possibility to, to go in to get inside the project because if she was thinking to have a composer to write all the film score, she would not involve me, involve me. She would involve a, a more experienced composer. So I started <laughs> by writing two or three music themes and she chose two compositions, two classical music compositions, one by Ravel and one by Claude Debussy, who worked actually very well for two scenes. And at the end, it ended up that it was a lot of original music and only those two compositions, classical music composition. That was my my chance, my first possibility to work. But that was a, a you know, I mean, 
I, I just sent that music, but no one of them could have replied, you know, it was yeah. uh, it's a tentative. I mean, it's not, you are yeah. not never sure. I send messages. I propose myself often to new productions. Sometimes they don't, they don't reply, but I, at least I tried, you know, mm. I tried to propose myself or another solution is to write, uh, work with uh, directors at the be um, beginners that write, that uh, direct short movies. And hopefully those directors that made the short movies one day will make a feature film and they will keep working with you. But also there, there's, there are no, nothing sure. It's a possibility. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people that go from the film industry end up writing basically for commercials and, awesome. and then game, the game, game, games industry, you know, video games and stuff like that, which well, is a very Italy, different we, approach to. We don't have some, so much game, games, uh, video games. So if yeah. a composer wants to start, he usually starts with a short movie. A short movie, yeah. Five, ten, fifteen minutes movie. That's the the situation. Usually for free, you work for free yeah. for a short movie. They don't have money, but you start to build your your curriculum and to build yeah. your relationship with the directors. You need to meet a lot of directors. More directors you meet, more chances you have. Chances that you will. Yeah. You will work one day with one of them, you know. Big so news. you need to be very uh, active. Yeah. Not, ah, oh, no one calls me. No one asks me to write the music. You need to move. Make, oh, make take, it happen. Take the phone the and calling, send mails and move your ass. Otherwise, no one will call you, you know. Yeah. You need to yeah, move. To be active, you know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. By the way, your your website is great, man. The new oh, website. thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, it was a long time. I didn't renew the website. Maybe two years, three years. I'm not sure. It was yeah. very old, the website. And now, finally, I, I succeeded to include more recent works that lead, I did in the last three years. Otherwise, there were all these all the film scores in the previous website. Yeah. And uh, now that, you know, as you know, Elisa uh, Girard is, is, is touring with Hans Zimmer, Oh. Maybe you get maybe you got a tour with Ellen. You know? I, I don't, well, I don't know. Well, well I, I don't I don't think Ellen Williams is doing a tour. She does sometimes concerts uh, in the place where she lives, which should be a very beautiful place, which is Wales. Well, yeah. In England. But she's she she's not making tours. Uh no, and no. she only records cover usually of uh, well known yeah. songs. I gave her the opportunity to record two original songs written by us, by me, music, and by her lyrics. Lyrics, yeah. Original songs written for a specific film, not a cover of a well-known song. Yeah, yeah. And maybe someone else also brought something for her. But otherwise, she records covers of a uh, James Bond song or a yeah. gladiator yeah. or well-known uh, yeah. uh, music. Maybe maybe she likes doing that instead of original, right? It, uh... No, no. I think she prefer she likes also to write original songs, but, but maybe she doesn't have so many opportunities to to do that. So yeah. it it's a it's a your business is a very very difficult business to make a living, man. Yeah, you're right. It's difficult. I hope that next year I will finally have a bigger Break. bigger yeah. bigger budget film. Yeah, and. The recording with members of the London Symphony Orchestra. Those are my my two objectives. I don't know if I'll succeed. You know, you never know. But and do it within it within Abbey Road. That's the place. And record at Abbey Road or Air Studio. It was uh, Abbey Road. I would never visited Abbey Road, but it was at Air Studio a few years yeah. ago. A guest of Dom Kelly of the English Session Orchestra and the quality, the sound of that studio and the orchestra, of course is amazing excellent. it's another world excellent sound because you know it's uh, an ex church and so everything is we built it with the, there's the wood inside where the, inside, the orchestra yeah. is it's wood yeah. and so the yes. the sound is very warm good man that would be great <laughs> man we need to go i need i need to go and visit the place man if you do yeah. if you 
If you make <laughs> it to the that place or the or the Abbey Road, you need to give me a call and I will catch a flight. I, catch I, inv a I invite you. I, for I, I will tell them I'm your assistant. I carry the equipment or ah, <laughs> and I invite you. And you can we can make a conversation later on about the recording at Abbey Road or our studios with yeah, members of the London Symphony Orchestra. Oh man, that would be a good. Yeah. That would be a, for the the greatest experience in my life, bro. Oh, and for me too. <laughs> Been no, there, of course. So everyone who, who will be involved it will, will be, be great. There are not yeah. so many film scores in the latest 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 years recorded yeah. with, with the London Symphony Orchestra. Man, I hope they do it then. Not so Marco many. was was very nice talking to my you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Merry Claudia. Christmas to <laughs> you and your family and your kids. And hopefully we'll meet up and have dinner or coffee or uh, wine yeah. or a beer. Maybe in, 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 Boston, in Boston. In Boston in January. Not not with yeah. my kids, will they will not be there. But we're yeah. two of, that, of us and the director of the film, if he he accepts to have you uh, as a guest in the during the shooting of the film. Yeah, and I will take some picture and give it to them. I give it to you. Whatever you know, I I, I, I I'm willing to help out a little bit. Okay, maybe I will become a maybe I will become an extra in that movie. And ah, you never know. I, mean, I don't know. know if he needs uh, the. It's you know, it's a very intimate film with only yeah. a few characters. This woman, her yeah. husband. Uh, her family and the uh, sister and some or other parents and doctors, but not mm -hmm. so many people. I got it. So it's just small. So many people. Uh, only small the doctor, same. the family, husband, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. It's very intimate, dramatic and intimate film. Yeah. All right. Thanks, All right. Mark, again. My I pleasure. Very happy to you. Merry Christmas to you. And thank you to Lisa as well for me. Thank you very much and happy new year. You yes, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye, Tom.